Imagine it. You're looking up at the sky and you seem to see something truly extraordinary. Vivid reds, greens and purples dancing across the night sky. Aurora is so brilliant that they were visible as far south as the Caribbean. This was no ordinary display of the Northern Lights. This was the result of the most powerful geomagnetic storm on record. Something we now know as the Carrington event. The Carrington event of 1859 was the most powerful geomagnetic storm ever recorded. It had a significant impact on Earth's magnetosphere and caused widespread disruptions to telegraph systems. Within the area of the Great Nebula, there appeared two patches of intense bright and white light, the brilliance of which was fully equal to that of direct sunlight. My first impression was that by some chance, a ray of light had penetrated a hole in the screen attached to the object glass, for the brilliance was such that it was difficult to conceive that in any position, the full light of the sun could be visible through it. These were the words of British astronomer named Richard Carrington, who, while observing the sun, noticed a sudden bright flash of light on its surface, a solar flare, the first one ever recorded. At this moment, Carrington had no idea that the flare he witnessed would trigger a geomagnetic storm of such immense proportions around 17 hours later. A massive coronal mass ejection, or CME, struck Earth's magnetic field. The effects were dramatic. Across the globe, telegraph systems, the cutting edge communication technology of the 19th century went haywire. Operators reported sparks flying from their equipment, some even receiving electric shocks. Some telegraph lines continued to send and receive messages, even after being disconnected from their power sources, as if the storm had electrified the very air. But what made the Carrington event truly significant was the scale of its impact and the lessons it taught us about the sun's influence on our planet. Today, we categorize these types of disturbances under the term space weather. And this event was a wake-up call, a dramatic reminder of just how interconnected we are with the dynamics of the cosmos. You see, the Carrington event serves as a benchmark for the most extreme solar storms. It set the stage for how we study and predict solar activity. While 19th century telegraphs suffered, modern technology like satellites, power grids, and global telecommunications would be far more vulnerable of a storm of that magnitude. But the study of events like these isn't just about looking back. It helps us to look forward. By analyzing the Carrington event, scientists have developed predictive models for future solar storms. These models are crucial for preparing our technology, things like satellites and power grids, for the inevitable day when the sun might again unleash a storm of similar intensity. In essence, understanding the Carrington event helps us prepare for the future. It reminds us that we're a part of a vast dynamic system influenced by the sun's whims. And as our own world ever becomes more reliant on technology, the lessons of that storm 160 years ago become more important than ever. The story of the Carrington event is a powerful example of how the universe can surprise us and how by looking to the past, we can better prepare for the future. It's a humbling reminder that while we may be masters of technology, we're still at the mercy of the forces that are far greater than ourselves in the universe. So let's take a trip back to the morning of September 1st, 1859, to a small observatory in Red Hill, Surrey. Richard Carrington, one of the most renowned solar observers of his time, was doing what he did best, watching the sun. He had a specialized telescope with a projection screen allowing him to safely observe and map sunspots. These dark patches on the sun's surface are caused by intense magnetic activity. For Carrington, this was routine work. But at exactly 11.18, something remarkable happened. A sudden brilliant flash of white light erupted from a cluster of sunspots. It was so bright that it momentarily stunned Carrington. This was the first time anyone had ever witnessed and recorded what we now call white light flares. He quickly sketched the phenomenon and made detailed notes, knowing instinctively that this was no ordinary solar event. Almost simultaneously, Another British observer, Richard Hodgson, was making the exact same observations, corroborating Carrington's account. Neither astronomer knew the full significance of what they had just seen, but it would become clear that this solar flare would trigger a geomagnetic storm that would wreak havoc on Earth's current technology. Carrington's documentation of the flare would become a cornerstone in our understanding of the sun's power and its potential to affect life here on Earth. But let's pause for a moment and set the stage. The mid 19th century was a time of technological revolution. At its heart was the telegraph, an invention that allowed messages to travel vast distances around the world in a matter of minutes. Imagine how groundbreaking this was, when before sending a message across the Atlantic could take weeks. By 1859, telegraph networks spanned the continents, supporting commerce, government, and personal communication. It was the internet of its day, and like any modern technology, it relied heavy on the stable electric current. What scientists didn't yet understand was the full context of the sun's influence on the Earth. Sure, they knew about sunspots 
and the sun's energy powered the life on Earth. But solar flares, the idea that that activity from the sun could create geomagnetic storms capable of affecting technology like the telegraph was still outside the realm of imagination. Then came the Carrington event. Just hours after Carrington's observation, a massive coronal mass ejection, or CME, reached Earth. What followed was nothing short of extraordinary. Telegraph systems around the world went haywire. In Europe and North America, telegraph operators reported sparks flying from their equipment, and in some cases, the operators were even shocked by their machines. One operator in Boston described how he was able to continue sending messages even after disconnecting the batteries. Such was the power of the storm that the telegraph lines were being charged directly by the Earth's magnetic field. They reported we have had repeated instances of the failure of the batteries, and at times we have still worked the entire day without them. In New York, telegraph lines fell silent for hours. Across the United States and Europe, telegraph networks were knocked out or severely damaged, a dramatic demonstration of just how vulnerable this new technology was to the forces of nature. In some instances, telegraph lines sparked and ignited small fires, and the economic losses were immediate, with companies scrambling to repair their damaged lines and restore the services as soon as possible. The Carrington event showed, in no uncertain terms, how reliant society had become on electrical technology and how fragile that technology was in the face of the sun's immense power. It wasn't just a natural phenomenon, it was a turning point. Engineers and scientists began to ask, well, what if this happens again? Though it would take decades to develop comprehensive solutions, this event marked the beginning of space weather science. Carrington's observation wasn't just a one-off moment of brilliance. It spurred a scientific movement, driving researchers to look deeper into the connections between sunspots, solar flares, and geomagnetic activity. We started to realize that the sun is not just a source of light and heat, but a volatile and unpredictable force that can disrupt life on Earth. The field of space weather research was born. The Carrington event wasn't just an isolated event in the 19th century. It's a warning for the future. Today, we're even more dependent on technology. Satellites, power grids, water treatment plants, and GPS. A storm like the one that Carrington witnessed could be a catastrophe for our modern world. But thanks to Carrington's meticulous documentation, we now know what's possible and we've been able to build models and strategies to predict and mitigate future solar storms. It reminds us that while we have come far with our technological advancements, we're still connected to the cosmos in ways that we cannot control. And we need to be prepared for whatever the sun has in store for us next. It's an extraordinary thought though, isn't it? That a single flare from the sun, something so far away, could have such a profound impact on our world. It's a humbling reminder of the delicate balance we live in under the ever watchful eye of our star. Now to understand the basics of the power behind solar storms, let's begin with the sun. A G-type's main sequence star, this massive glowing sphere of hot plasma, is mostly made of hydrogen and helium. It's driven by a complex dynamic of magnetic fields. This magnetic energy powers the whole range of solar activity, from sunspots to solar flares, and of course, corona mass ejections. These phenomena, which occur regularly, are stunning to observe, but also can have a profound impact on Earth. So what exactly are sunspots? These are regions of the sun's surface that are cooler and darker compared to their surroundings. Though cooler in this context means still around 3,800 degrees Kelvin. Sunspots are visible sign of intense magnetic activity bubbling up from inside the sun. And they tend to occur in pairs or clusters. Now these sunspots don't appear randomly. They follow a fascinating cycle so far of 11 years. During the peak of the cycle, known as the solar maximum, the sun's activity intensifies and in these active regions around the sunspots, some of the most dramatic solar events take place, solar flares. Solar flares are sudden, powerful bursts of radiation. They happen when the magnetic energy stored in the sun's atmosphere is released in a matter of minutes. Flares are classified by their intensity, C, M, and the most powerful being X class. For example, an X2 flare is twice the intensity of an X1 flare. These solar flares can affect the entire solar atmosphere, heating plasma to tens of millions of degrees and release an energy that can be the equivalent to billions of megatons of TNT. But these flares are just a part of the story. Coronal mass ejections are even more dramatic in some ways. While a solar flare is a burst of energy, a CME is a massive cloud of solar material, billions of tons of plasma, launched from the sun's corona into space. These CMEs travel at varying speeds, from 250 kilometers per second to over 3,000 kilometers per second. The fastest ones can reach Earth in a mere 15 to 18 hours, while the slower ones may take several days. Now what makes CMEs particularly important to us on Earth is their ability to cause geomagnetic storms. These are large disturbances in the Earth's magnetosphere, the protective bubble formed by the Earth's magnetic field. 
When a CME reaches Earth, it interacts with the magnetosphere. And if its magnetic field is aligned opposite to the Earth's, something called magnetic reconnection can occur. This allows a huge amount of solar energy to pour into the Earth's magnetosphere, compressing it on the day side and elongating it on the night side. These disturbances lead to geomagnetic storms, and during the main phase of a storm, the Earth's magnetic field weakens, sometimes for hours or days. As the magnetosphere recovers, these storms can trigger awe-inspiring auras, the northern and southern lights, as particles from these storms collide with the gases in Earth's atmosphere, creating those vivid displays of colour. But not all of the effects are quite so beautiful. CMEs can wreak havoc on our technology. Geomagnetic storms disrupt satellite communications, cause power grid failures, and even damage some of those satellites. A powerful storm could induce electric currents in our power lines, leading to voltage instability, or even large-scale blackouts. In fact, during 1989 Quebec blackout, a solar storm knocked out the power for millions of people. There are also effects on our communication systems. High-frequency radio signals used in aviation and maritime navigation can be severely disrupted. GPS systems can be thrown off course, which is not a minor inconvenience. It can have serious implications for industries like aviation, shipping, and emergency services that rely on very precise positioning. So how do we prepare for these solar storms? Luckily, we have tools that allow us to monitor the sun continuously. Space-based observatories like NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory and the European Space Agency's Solar and Heliospheric Observatory keep constant eye on the sun's solar activity. They track sunspots, solar flares and CMEs in real time. Agencies like NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Centre use this data to issue forecasts and warnings, giving us a heads up when a solar storm is heading our way. Advanced computer models simulate how these CMEs will travel through space and interact with the Earth's magnetosphere. These predictive tools are essential to allowing us to mitigate potential damage and by preparing our power grids, protecting satellites and ensuring communication systems are resilient. The Carrington event of 1859 remains a vivid reminder of just how powerful these solar storms can be. If an event of similar magnitude occurred today, the impacts on our increasingly technological society could be far reaching. But thanks to the ongoing research and efforts by scientists and space weather scientists alike, we're much better equipped to understand and prepare for these events. The sun, our star, may be millions of kilometers away, but its influence is far reaching. Solar flares, CMEs, and solar wind aren't just a distant phenomena. They can affect life on Earth in a profound way. As they have in the past, they will likely do again in the future. And that's why the study of solar physics and space weather remains crucial to our technological age. The event was documented worldwide. In the UK, Carrington's observations provided critical data while observatories in Greenwich and Kew recorded extreme magnetic fluctuations. Across Europe, auroras appeared in rare locations like Rome and Madrid, and scientific societies noted unprecedented magnetic disturbances in the US. The auroras were seen as far south as Texas, and telegraph systems experienced significant disruptions. Australia and New Zealand reported unusually bright auroras aligning with the disturbances observed in the Northern Hemisphere. The auroras of the Carrington event were extraordinarily vivid. Seen in the Caribbean, Hawaii and Chile, their intensity was so bright that in many areas they were visible even during the daylight. Waking people and mistook them for sunrise and getting up and getting ready for work. In the southern hemisphere, the lights extended far beyond their typical range. The event's magnetic disturbances were equally dramatic. As magnetometers around the world recorded extreme deflections, with needles swinging violently due to rapid changes in Earth's magnetic field. This demonstrated the storm's global reach. Richard Carrington's detailed observations, recorded through sketches and notes, was the first evidence of directly linking solar activity to geomagnetic effects on Earth. His report to the Royal Astronomical Society was pivotal in establishing this connection. Across the globe, scientists compiled their data from magnetic observatories and visual aurora sightings, highlighting the need for further research into the Sun-Earth relationship and inspiring a deeper understanding of space weather phenomena. The Carrington event occurred before the rise of modern electrical grids, but its effect on telegraph systems revealed the vulnerabilities of electrical technologies to geomagnetic storms. As electrical infrastructure evolved in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, engineers drew lessons from this event to mitigate similar risks in the future. By the late 19th century, the electrical age had begun with the development of electrical lighting, power distribution, and motors. Innovators like Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla paved the way, 
And if you want to hear about the innovations and exploits of the renowned Nikola Tesla, I have a video of him on my channel as well. Edison's 1879 invention of the incandescent light bulb required reliable power systems. Early systems like Edison's Pearl Street Station served localized areas using direct current. Tesla's alternating current inventions enabled long distance electrical transmission, laying the groundwork and foundations for larger grids. The Carrington event has driven public awareness and scientific research, shaping modern responses to space weather and its risks. The event's dramatic auroras and telegraph disruptions have been preserved in records, helping educate people on the effects of solar storms. Solar observatories like SOHO and the development of space weather models have advanced the understanding of the terrestrial interactions of solar storms. Agencies like NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center issue forecasts and warnings, while infrastructure hardening and emergency preparedness plans help to mitigate the effects of any future CMEs. Since Richard Carrington's observations in the 19th century, solar observation technology has advanced immensely, giving scientists unprecedented insight into solar activity and its effects on the Earth. Telescopes like the McMath Pierce Solar Telescope and the Big Bear Solar Observatory use adaptive optics to capture clear images of the sun's surface. Spectrographs study the sun's light to understand its composition, while techniques like helioseismology allow scientists to examine the sun's interior by analyzing its surface waves. Space-based technology has revolutionized solar study. Observatories like SOHO, launched in 1995, provide real-time monitoring of solar activity, like flares and CMEs. New emissions such as the Solar Dynamics Observatory and the Parker Solar Probe offer high-definition imagery and in-depth data on the solar corona and magnetic fields. With modern tools, scientists can re-examine historical records like those from the Carrington event, Digitizing old photographic plates and logbooks allows for better analysis of sunspot behavior and geomagnetic disturbances, while techniques like image processing and spectral analysis improve clarity in data extraction. Comparative analysis with other significant solar events, such as the 1921 railroad storm, the 1989 Quebec blackout, and Halloween storms of 2003 and 2012 near Miss, highlights the vulnerability and potential for severity of solar activity Advances in predictive modeling and forecasting, including the use of machine learning and artificial intelligence, have improved our ability to anticipate and mitigate the effects of space weather. These developments underscore the importance of continuous monitoring, global coordination, and preparedness in managing the risks posed by solar storms. As we all continue to rely on advanced technologies and the interconnected infrastructure of the electrical world, these lessons from the Carrington event and subsequent solar storms remain relevant. By leveraging modern tools and techniques, we can enhance our resilience and ensure that the continued functionality of our critical systems in the face of future space weather events. The study of significant solar storms has provided valuable lessons and driven advancements in space weather forecasting and mitigation strategies. These events have highlighted vulnerabilities in modern technology and infrastructure to geomagnetic storms and underscored the importance of preparedness. The sun with its majestic power an unpredictable behavior has both fascinated and challenged humanity for centuries. From the pioneering observations of Richard Carrington in the 19th century to today's cutting edge technology, our understanding of solar storms has come a long way. Groundbreaking advancements in solar observation and the reanalysis of historical events and the application of modern predictive techniques now allow us to monitor, forecast, and even mitigate the effects of space weather. As we've seen, storms like the Carrington event serve as powerful reminders of the sun's potential to disrupt life on Earth. However, thanks to global collaboration and technical innovation, we are more prepared than ever before. But the story doesn't end there. The sun's unpredictable nature means that the threat of another significant solar storm is not a matter of if, but a case of when. With ongoing research, space missions, and advanced predictive models, scientists continue to unravel the mysteries of our sun, ensuring that we are ready for whatever it may throw at us next. Thanks for watching.